my topic obviously is, yes, you need Flash, okay? Um, uh, I've been doing this now for 40 years. I started out when I was in high school uh, in 1976. I was a junior in high school. A gentleman came over uh, on career day and showed all of his prints where people wanted to be photographers, and he really uh, uh, inspired me to, to get into photography. I wanted to get into film, but when I saw that, uh, I decided to go into photography. Um, and it was just my luck, when I'm usually not that lucky, that he happened to have been a uh, custom color printer in a, a, a lab called Fine Art. In 1969, Fine Art was in, in lower Manhattan. It was the premier uh, photo lab. Uh, when the men landed on the moon in 1969, um, they brought the film there to be processed and printed. And he was the custom color printer who did those, ten, uh, th those Hasselblad you know, images. So, uh, so he, I, I lucked out. I learned from somebody that was very, very good. So, um, <clears throat> so you need flash. Let me get my little thing here. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, what I see a lot of today in photography are photographs that are similar to these. All right. Now, these photographs have a couple of things in common. The first thing that they have in common is that all of them were taken without flash. The second thing that they have in common is that they are all photographs where the conditions were very high contrast. You have a background which is sunlit, very high exposure, with a subject that's usually in the shade. All right, So you have a tremendous amount of contrast between your subject and your background. And the only thing, you know, when I first look at these photographs, I kind of think, yeah, kind of nice, you know. But as I look at them more closely, the one thing that hits me about all of them, to me, they, looked, they all look washed out. Okay? There's no real saturation in the colors. And I see a lot of photography like this today. Okay? Um, and, um, and these are some of the reasons why. You know, when I ask photographers, uh, when I'm at a wedding and there's another photographer in the room and I'll watch him and I'll see that he's using no flash, I say, oh, I'm curious. You know, what effects are you getting, you know, not to use flash? You know, you know, what do you like about that? And these are probably the most common things that I hear. The first one is, is I don't like to use flash. I don't like math. That's because I'm not that familiar with math. I'm not that good with math. And so therefore, I stay away from it, all right? If we learn to use flash more and more to where it becomes easy to use, you're going to love flash, all right? The next thing I hear is I like natural lighting. I like natural lighting too because there are some instances where natural lighting is going to give you beautiful, beautiful effects. The problem with natural lighting is it's very limited as to when or where you can take photographs. All right? and, and so I don't want to be limited. I can't be limited if I make my living in photography. If somebody says to me, Manny, I want a family photograph of my family and I at the beach. The only time we can make it is at 1 in the afternoon. My schedule is booked. It's like you either take it or leave it. I'm going to take it. Okay, I, I want to get paid. I want to do what I like to do, you know, photography. Now, there are times when I'll say, well, you know, if you wait till the golden hour, you know, that's really going to be nice. But I, I had one client that told me, no, I don't want an orange sky. I want a blue sky. You know, we go out sailing, and all we see is blue skies. That's what I want in my photograph, you know. And so um, uh, there are times when you simply cannot go whenever you like. You have to go with the client's schedule, all right? The next thing is I don't like a lot of gear, all right? And I don't like a lot of gear either. However, you know, I do bring a lot of gear in the trunk of the car, but I do try to have a minimal amount on me for the simple reason the more gear you have, the more cumbersome, the less you're going to want to do it, okay? The, the, the less fun it becomes. So I'm going to show you what I use, and you're going to see it really is minimal amount, although I have two bags of equipment in the car just in case something comes up and I need something else, all right? And lastly is I hear people that will say, um, I, you know, I get the same effect without it. Now, fortunately, this is the one I hear the least of. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm guilty of this last one. When I first started photography, that was my thing. You know, I can get the same thing without it. 
that's just plain ignorance, okay? The, the truth is that you can get so much more by using flash, all right? And so looking at these photographs, again, they're all washed out to me. There's no saturation. So let's start. Oh, okay, there we go. So uh, this is what I normally like to use as far as my equipment. Uh, I have my assistant. In this case, it's, it's my wife. It can be somebody else. I like to have my wife with me, and I like the companionship. Uh, but it's basically, uh, for those of you that shoot, you know, they're about the same, Canon, Nikon, you know, they're all the same sizes, Sony. Uh, uh, a 600, and I like the 600 because they have the built-in uh, radio transmitter, so you're wireless, and it's not infrared wireless, because that's a nightmare, okay? Um, and then I have a uh, Turbo SC made by Quantum. I really like these a lot. Uh, they're really tiny, um, more than enough power. I can do an entire wedding, and only one light will go off. I got three others left, okay? And, and I typically typically take about a thousand photographs at a wedding, okay? Um, so, uh, and, and for those of you that have, that have these, you have to have the batteries in the unit as well because the batteries in the unit power the electronics. This powers the capacitor, the, the actual flash, okay? But it's really, really neat. And it's very lightweight. You know, compared to the flashes I used to use, my, my METS 60 series, uh, that was heavy. Uh, and before that, multi-blitz report. I can go on for the people that use Lumidine, uh, huge battery packs. This is so tiny, you know, I don't feel like I'm making my wife work, <laughs> okay? So, <laughs> although she might tell you otherwise, but. Uh, and then the other thing is that I have is I have the, the control unit, the, the, the remote, which goes onto the camera. And basically what it is, it's all of the electro uh, electronics that are in the flash, but without the flash, all right? And that's how I like to take most of my photographs, okay? Off-camera flash, held by my assistant, and the transmitter. And you're gonna see some really wonderful results. And like I say, because of that, it's so easy and so fast. I mean, my shoulder, I actually got uh, arthritis in the shoulder because of the, the, the old uh, battery packs. But now it's so easy, I can take so many photographs uh, because it's just easy to move around with, all right? Okay, so let's start off with simple, and then we're gonna graduate to some more complicated things. Um, there you go, okay. So I like to use a lot of window light. I love window light, all right? Um, now, you take a photograph like this. Now, this is without flash. No, oh, and by the way, I know that there's reflectors. There are th those uh, LED lights. I personally don't like any of them because to me there are a lot of negatives with them. I once had my daughter hold a reflector for me. She almost got blown over. A gust of wind came and <laughs> caught the reflector. And oddly enough, it just so happened that I had her standing on, on a seawall. Uh, okay, and, and you know, I, I, I saw her go like this and she caught her balance and we all, all had a big chuckle but really it wasn't that funny, okay? But in looking back, uh, she, you know, it was okay. But, uh, and then th those, those LEDs, you know, you, you shine those things on somebody's face, they're so annoying, they're just absolutely annoying. And they're limited as to what you can do. You can, they're, they're very weak compared to your flash. So you can only use them under very low light conditions. So I want something that I can use all the time, and that's it, okay? I don't want any, any other equipment. Something that I can use all the time under Strong light, very weak light, at nighttime, dusk, all, and, and everything in between. That's why I like the flashes. Now, this is window light. Um, no flash, no reflector, no anything. Now, by itself, it's a pretty nice photograph. However, you might say the shadows on the bride's face are a little bit too deep, all right? So, what you do is you, you power up uh, your, your uh, remote, it's wireless with the flash. You have your assistant stand directly in back of you, directly in back of you, and you just take your picture. So what I did was, I didn't change exposure or anything, okay? The exposure remained, uh, my camera's on manual. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you, I probably took this, because I do this all the time, uh, a 320 ISO, 
uh, f60, I'm sorry, f60, yeah, right, uh, a 60th of a second uh, at f4, all right? And I got this result. I didn't change a thing. All I did was turn on the flash, put it in back of me, so, so now uh, if the bride is standing here and I'm taking the photograph, I'm getting flat lighting, a broad light, and it's lighting everything evenly. And, uh, and by doing that, I get that. And if you look, the, sh the shadow is still there. We don't want to get rid of shadows. We really don't. Shadows are wonderful. Shadows give us three-dimensional look on a two-dimensional surface, all right? So shadows give us the illusion of depth, of three dimension. But we don't want them to be so deep, you know, and I shouldn't say that because there's an exception for everything, you know? Normally, you don't want them to go so deep that you don't see any detail, but you don't want to get rid of them either. So to me, this is very pleasant. Now, let's suppose that I wanted that shadow to go a little deeper. Well, then I push the button that says plus or minus on the control unit, and I might minus it by 0.3 or 0.7, depending on how much shadow that I want, all right? But I can control that, right? right? I don't have to worry about my assistant. You know, in the old days, I would have to tell myself, okay, put the power at 50%. Okay, put the power at 75%. No, I don't have to do anything. I just go in there real quick, boom, and I'll just take the photograph over again. So it's really, really easy. So now you have a beautiful light ratio. And what's nice is nothing is burnt out, okay? Uh, I don't know if you can see in this one here, on the top one, uh, right up here, it's fairly burnt out. Here it's not. It still has detail. So, so that's the nice thing, you know? And, and, and the definition of a perfect exposure is where you can see detail in the highlights and detail in the shadows. That's a perfect exposure. That's what you know, Ansel Adams was known for. He'd go out and he, and he would do it on a grand scale. Perfect exposure in the outdoor scenes in the, in the richest of blacks and in the whitest of whites, right? That's a perfect exposure. My assistant was directly in back of me. Whenever you want to do fill flash, which is what this is, whenever you want to do fill flash, the light should be directly behind your camera, behind you. And the reason for that, fill flash is a broad light across the entire photo. You can also do fill flash on the side where the light is coming from, and that'll give you a little bit more shadow, okay? So, all right. So let's take a look at a photograph like this, all right? Now, where you have high contrast, now in the previous photograph, the contrast was not that high. It was only a little bit. But in a photograph like this, you have tremendous contrast. The dress, which is in the background, almost completely burnt out, is by the window. That's like three stops overexposed, two stops overexposed. The shoes are in the foreground, and they're in shadow. As a matter of fact, there's actually there's flash. I used flash on this shot here. But it's still it's not to my liking. All right? And the reason for that is the... the, the um, flash is not strong enough to equal the light in the background, all right? So, if I set the exposure for the background, and this is how it works when you're trying to balance your background exposure with your foreground exposure. You set the exposure for your background. The reason for that is you can't change that. That's the natural light that's there. You can't change that. The only thing you can do is expose for that. And then what you do is you turn on your flash and you take the photograph. There's a problem with that, all right? Your sensor, you know, light meters, because of their, defini their very definition, their light sensors, uh, your, your light meter is overwhelmed by that brightness in the background. I don't care if you're using spot metering, center weighted metering, uh, matrix metering, it doesn't matter what you're using, it's overwhelmed. It's gonna try to make everything gray. And the gentleman that was here before me from Nikon was explaining that. Your sensor, your camera is trying to expose everything for gray. If it sees white, it wants to make it gray. If it sees black, it wants to make it gray. So it's gonna set your camera, it's gonna adjust your camera. So what's happening in a case like this is 
it's seeing that the background is properly exposed, which is the majority of the image area, and the shoes are a small part. So the flash is being cut off before it gives enough light to properly expose your, your, your subject. So if you look at the shoes, there's a flash on it, but they're underexposed. <coughs> they're still dark. Right? So um, what you have to do is you have to fool the flash and the camera. See, because the camera has something called ETTL. E stands for evaluative. It evaluates the photograph for you. Isn't that great? The problem is its evaluation is not the same as your evaluation. That's where the problem comes in. Its thinking process is not the same as your thinking process. All right? So what I did was on my remote, I dialed plus two. In other words, I want the, the flash to overexpose the photograph by two f-stops. So then I get that. <laughs> now, is it really overexposing it? No, it's not overexposing it. But it thinks it is. What you're doing is, is you're fooling it because otherwise, again, it'll, it'll read the scene. It'll say, there's enough light there for an exposure. You don't need full power flash. You don't need as much flash. So it cuts off the flash prematurely before it gives it a chance to really saturate it. So you want to fool it and say, no, overexpose it. And then you're going to get a perfect exposure. All right? So let's take a look at this photograph here. Again, very high contrast. That building, it's probably three and a half stops brighter than where the bride is standing. L looking at this, you have a high contrast area. If we don't use flash, as in these two photographs, we have a choice as photographers. We have two choices. You either expose for the bright background and let the subject go dark, or you expose for the subject and you blow out the background. It's completely washed out and out of detail. All right? Here's the thing. If you look at these two photographs, if they're cyan in color. Cyan is like a light, light blue. It's a mixture of blue and green. Now, granted, I can go into Photoshop. I can correct that. But if you look at her skin, there's no color in it. Her skin is so underexposed, there's no color there. All right? And there's not much detail. There's no detail in the building. There's not, not much detail on her. So we have, to me, the worst of both worlds. All right? Now, uh, a friend of mine said, well, when you get a situation like that, just turn into a black and white. I have to admit, it looks a little bit better, but still, that black and white, it looks washed out to me. That hotel is gone, okay? Let's introduce some flash, but before we introduce flash, remember what I said. Your light meter is gonna see that tremendously bright sky and building, and it's gonna be overwhelmed. When you go to use your flash, it's gonna cut it off before the subject gets enough light on her. All right, so basically what's gonna happen is you're not gonna see much of a difference if that's all you do. You just turn on your flash. What you need to do is, again, you need to push that button that says plus or minus and plus three. All right, you want a plus three. Why do I start at three? Because I can see that that background's about three stops over. All right, so now when you do that and you compare the left, no flash, the right with flash, and by the way, off camera flash. In other words, my assistant is holding it. And as, if you look at the one on the right, you will see a shadow going diagonally opposite of where the flash is coming from. Okay? Now you, you look at the, at the bride. Number one, her dress is white. Okay? It could even be warmed up a little bit more, but it's white. Look at the detail in the building. None of it is, is washed out. You have beautiful deep sky. You have beautiful greens. Everything is saturated. And if you look at her skin, she has color in her skin. She's alive. Okay, she's not, she's not a corpse. She has, you know, you know, peaches and cream, whatever, you know, color. Okay? And that's what you really want to see. Okay? Now, even if you turn that into a black and white, look how much richer that it looks. You know, and, and these are, you know, televised images, monitors. If you go to print them, they're really gonna be nice. Okay? So on the left, you have a washed out. On the right, you have fully saturated 
with a lot of detail. And when I talk to brides, I show them things like this. I say, you know, a lot of photographers, this is what you're going to see. And I, I've had a few brides tell me, you know, you're right. When I go on, on the Internet, I do see photographs that their faces look washed out and everything. And that's what it is. All right? So, now, why do we have to play these games with, the, with, these, with these units? You know, plus two, plus three, you know, and, and, and all this kind of stuff. It's because, okay, now I'm going to tell you, okay, the doors are closed, so nobody, you know, because I don't want to get in trouble for this, but Nikon, Canon, Sony, I don't care what unit you have, they are all programmed by one person. Okay, this guy here. <laughs> They're all programmed by this guy. And so what happens, sometimes the way your flash works will drive you crazy because it doesn't do what you, what you would think it's supposed to do. All right? So you kind of have to play with the controls a little bit. As a matter of fact, I'm going to tell you something. Um, I, I was using my, uh, my METS 60 series uh, flash. Uh, up until 2000, uh, uh, up until I got these units here about two years ago, I, I, I was using a, you know, a totally different flash. I wasn't using any of these speed lights. Uh, in 2005, I had bought three 580, you know, the, the Canon 580s. <laughs> they were driving me crazy. Uh, after, after about six months, I gave one to a friend, and I put two of them on sale on the Internet. I couldn't stand them, okay? Uh, because of this, right? Uh, the 580, yeah, yeah. Uh, the 580, it's it's an older unit. Uh, it, uh, the flash, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. So this is two generations newer. Okay. So uh, these though are a little bit more accurate, but really TTL. The one thing I can tell you, if if you're not careful, I mean, I don't know if this has ever happened, you know, to you, but. I'll be at a wedding, at a reception where it's dark, and I'll go and take a photograph, and it'll come out perfectly exposed. I'll go take another one, it'll two stops underexposed. You know? Or I'll take one, it's two stops overexposed. And then three or four photographs later, it's OK. ETTL, there's one thing that is constant about TTL. It is inconsistent. <laughs> really is. Until you start playing with these controls. And then for some reason, it's like, it gets slapped in the face. It's like, oh, oh, that's what I'm supposed to do. Okay, all right. But if you just leave it to, to its own on zero, in you know, you know, midway, uh, you're gonna have a lot of problems. <laughs> At least I do. All right. So you have a photograph like this. Again, that's you know, this is Florida. You know, that's two hundredth of a second at f11 to get the sky. If you want to get the sky, all right. So now, with this particular photograph, what happened was my assistant was busy parking the car, but I wanted to get out there and start taking photographs, so I took this with one flash on the camera. All right? So again, what did I do? I put it plus three so to, to tell it to overexpose by three f-stops. Otherwise, I'll get a silhouette. Okay? And to be honest with you, I would have rather have my assistant there with the off-camera. I would have gotten that sky another f-stop lower. All right? So, so you have to have flash. Otherwise, all you're going to do is get a white sky. You know, and sometimes that's OK. And sometimes it even looks nice. I don't know if you would want that every single time. OK. Again, um, the subject is in shadow. Uh, why in shadow? For a number of reasons. Uh, or in shade, I, sh I, should, I should say. Uh, number one, they're not squinting their eyes. Has anybody come to Florida? You know, we have a different sun than you do. We really do. Uh, it's just unbelievably strong, OK? So, um, so if you go out in the sun, you're going to squint. You're going to get people that are going to go like this. The other thing is it's soft on the skin when you go in, in the shade. You know, you put somebody in, in sunlight, and their skin looks like leather, OK? Um, so again, I can expose for the shadows, which is where they're at, or I can expose for the background. Well, I want both. All right, the one on the bot on in the middle is sort of quasi acceptable. All right, but I want the one to, to the far right. I want to see detail. You know, I did a wedding where uh, the couple's boat was in the background, and so they're going to want to see it. All right, so so 
this photograph here was taken with off-camera flash, again, actually two flashes, one off-camera from my assistant. Again, you can see the shadow going diagonally across. And then one flash was on top of my camera, two. All right, by doing that, I can get that sky nice and deep. All right, so indoors, all right, I do weddings. So indoors, now this is the exposure for the background. Again, you wanna do this in steps, otherwise, if you're like me, you're gonna get yourself confused, okay? You wanna do this in, in, in steps. So the first step is expose for the background. Get your background exposure. I can't change those lights, all right? So I have to get the exposure for that. Then I take my subject and I put them, and I put them where, wherever I wanna put them in the composition. Now if I leave it at that, look at what we have. It's awful, okay? He's got raccoon eyes, right? Black sockets, no, no, no detail completely dark here, so it's awful, all right? Now, yes, it's true. I can open up the shutter. I can open up the, the uh, aperture, and I can overexpose it. But you know what? It really looks bad to me. It looks washed out, okay? And guess what? Those raccoon eyes, they haven't gone away. They just got a little bit lighter, that's all, all right? So, Again, like my friend says, eh, you know, just turn into a black and white. I know, but it's like he's still washed out. I still got bad lighting. You know, I still got, you know, black eyes. I don't like it, All right? So now what we do is we take our little control unit here, all right, and we put it at plus 0.3 or 0.7. Does anybody know why I, I would do that, that I would want to try to overexpose it? Because if I don't, all it's going to do is try to fill in. It's just going to try to fill in a little bit, the shadows. It's not going to do anything um, really uh, significant. So watch this. So that's off-camera flash. One flash, one flash off-camera to our left if you're looking at the photograph, all right? So what am I telling the flash? I want you to overexpose. Compared to the exposure that's in the room, I want you to ex overexpose by 0.3 or 0.7. You have to play with that. You have to take the picture, see how it looks to you, and then, and, and then adjust, okay? So, so now there's enough light. It's not trying to fill in the shadows a little bit. It's actually putting a light pattern on his face, all right? Now, you might say to me, now I personally do like that, now, you might say to me, you know, the shadow side of the face, for my taste, is too dark. You know, one thing about photography, you know, I don't want to say, for, for the most part, there's no right or wrong. It's whatever you want. You know, if your vision is a, is a certain way, nobody can tell you that you're wrong. Okay? But there are certain things that sometimes do look a little bit better than others. But again, it's all, you know, it's all a matter of opinion. You, if I ask... 60 people here, I know I'll probably get at least 40 different answers. So, so it's whatever your taste is. So let's suppose you said to yourself, you know, that shadow looks a little bit hard for me. Okay, no problem. So now you take a second flash and you put it on your camera. Okay. Okay, well, you get the gist of it. Okay. I'm not wearing my glasses. I guess I should. Okay, so I tend to use this. Uh, it's made by Custom Brackets. I, I know that they sell it here because I bought it here. So, uh, so, so you use this. Okay, no diffuser, no nothing. Okay, and now you have this flash to compensate for the harsh shadows. So this is where you would use two lights if you want to control the shadows. If you feel the shadows are too strong, then you put a flash on here. Again, I'm not gonna bother with the reflectors. I have to worry about how close the reflector is to the person. Is it bouncing? Is it the right angle? Is it in the picture? Second flash will take care of it. So this becomes the master unit, and that other one is, is the slave. You know, and what's nice about this too, you know what I like? It's got this little thing here. So when I put the camera down, it's not getting scratched. So it's kind of nice, you know. But both are powered, both are powered by the uh, 
by the quantum SC. Now, I will tell you something about the, these units. They really are good. Okay, I have a friend, a fellow photographer, who, who will snap 30 photographs in, in succession. Okay, and some photographers shoot like that. Nothing wrong with it. If that's, if that's your thing, that's okay. I'm old school. I was taught first think of what you want, figure out how you want to take it, adjust and take it. Maybe take two or three just in case. Okay, but my friend, to give an example, uh, if the bride's coming up the aisle with her father, bless you, I mean, he's literally going like this. Click, click, click. He, he's following them backwards. Click, 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 click. You know, I once joked to him, I said, you know what, you'd be better off with a movie camera. Okay, and so, um, so if you shoot like that, this will not do. Then you need the Turbo 3, okay, which is like a six, $700 unit. The, these are $350. These are already, I think, these are about three years old, if I remember correctly. Um, so they're really, really nice. All right, so next. All right. <clears throat> All right, now. Another cool feature about these flashes is you can zoom, you know, if any of you have them, you know, when you zoom your lens, you can hear the flash zooming in and zooming out to, to match the, the uh, lens that, that you're using. Well, I was at a seminar one time and the speaker said, you know, they put this feature, I can't figure out what the heck they, why, why would you ever need a feature like that on there for? And I, and I thought to myself, yeah, you know, he's kind of right. I don't know. I can't think of anything either. That is, until I was at a wedding, and, uh, and so when you're at a indoor, or it can even be outdoor, uh, when you're indoor and you're trying to take a nice wide-angle shot with a 14-millimeter lens or 15, whatever it is, um, and you want to expose, obviously, for your subject. You want to see your subject, right? So what happens? Well, they're midway in the church from left to right. So where are they? They're in the darkest part of the church, right? And you have your windows. Now, those are beautiful windows. You have stained glass. There's so much beautiful detail, right? So if you don't use flash, you have to settle for this, right? Because if you want to, you can start closing down your shutter, uh, your, your f-stop or shortening your time. However, it starts to get dark very fast where, where the bride and groom are. And guess what? You don't have much more, you know, if you compare the two, you know, there's not much more detail between this and this. There's a little bit more, but it's nothing really substantial, right? But if you take the flash that's on your camera and you go ahead and you zoom in, if you look where it says 200, manual zoom, 200, guess what happens? <coughs> Isn't that cool? Ha look at the detail. That's the church. When the bride and groom go in the church, that's what they see. They don't see blown out windows. They see beautiful stained glass windows, right? And so now all of a sudden, oh, and guess what you have to do? You don't want to fill in. You don't want to use it as a fill-in flash because for some reason, to me, it's like that's what they're designed for, fill-in flash, okay? You want to put it plus one. Start off with plus one. You'll probably be right on the money. And, and when you look at it, if, you, if it looks too bright to you, then, you know, 0.7, all right? But if you just leave that in the middle at zero, they're going to be underexposed. You're, you're not going to get much light to them. Why? Because the flash just wants to fill in neutral gray. You want to get rich, saturated colors, okay? So there you go. That's what it's filling in, where, where the flash is, is hitting. It's not hitting everything. You got it zoomed in, so it's just hitting that little center spot. There, there's a wedding hall in Tampa that recommends me, and I'm the only one that does this. Uh, they, they have their ceremonies outdoors at the gazebo at sunset. And where's the sun? Directly in back of the bride and groom. So they're backlit, okay? So I can go from the back with the wide angle lens, I'll zoom in, put it plus three, because the sky is so bright, right? And they're in shadow, they're in silhouette. 
and I'll almost even them out, almost. You know, so you have a beautiful sky and you can see them. They're not in silhouette. Okay. So there's the original, no flash, and there's uh, with using the flash and the zoom. And again, when I'm talking to a prospective bride and a groom, I, will, I, I have prints of these, and I'll show them. Uh, you know, now, just out of curiosity, which one do you like better? I, I've never had anybody point to that one. They always point to the one on the right. Oh, that looks really nice. I can see the, the, the stained glass window. And if they don't, I'll point it out to them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, you see on this one here, you can't see them. Well, that's what everybody else is going to do. You know, all those photographers that tell you, I don't use flash, that's what you're going to get. Okay, if you do real estate photography, architectural photography, okay, what do you want? You want the house not to be a house. You want it to be a home. You want people to be emotionally drawn to the house. Oh, that could be me living in that house. That could be my home, right? So I found that something that's very romantic and nostalgic looking is to take the photograph at dusk, at dusk you know, which is dusk, in the morning or in the evening? Thank you. At dusk. <laughs> I'm too lazy to get up in the morning. So, so what I'll do is uh, I like to take them fo like, you know, like this because I like the sky. The problem is if I don't use flash, this is what I'm going to get. All right? So I use flash plus one, okay, from across the street. Now, really bad composition. That's okay. That's why we crop photographs, all right? So now, which house would you like? How about that house? Would you like to live in that house? I would. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, nice. it's got that nice warm glow in the inside. Oh, look at that beautiful sunset I'm going to see every night. The grass is all green. OK? Only one, Only one flash. And you still yeah, but I think I took it like a, I want to say it's 1,600 ISO, if I remember correctly. I mean, the sun had gone down by quite a bit. It, this is just before it gets black outside, okay? So, now, um, this is a house uh, in Lithia, which is past, so south of Tampa, um, $1.5 million. It was listed by Sotheby's for two years, never sold. Looks nice, right? The photographer went there, eh, it kind of looks washed out, right? Washed out is washed out. It doesn't matter if it's people or things, right? So when the new realtor got it, they called me up. I went there with four flash units. Okay, this was 9,000 square feet. Uh, I went there with four flash units. Gee, do you think you'd like to buy that house instead? Right? Okay, so this is at dusk. Now, there's a little bit of retouching done because some of the flashes I was able to, take, to crop out, but some... I just couldn't help it. They had to be in the spot that they were in in order for me to light. And you can see that I used four flashes by looking at the ground, okay? Uh, to the right by the tree, that's one flash. To the left, that's flash number two. Flash number three is, uh, is over here. It was retouched out. It was on a stand, on a black stand. It was retouched. And flash number four. Isn't that nice, though? Which, you know, which, which is better? Right? Okay, I use it at, at weddings. This is the place that recommends me a lot. Now, here there's three light sources. There's the sun, which is directly in back of her torso. The sun is directly in back of her, right? My assistant is to the right of the picture at a 45 degree angle. And then the flash on my camera is opening up the shadows a little bit. Why? Because it's plus three, right? That's a bright sky. The sun is directly in my face. So you know that that exposure is three stops over. She's in complete shadow, silhouette. So plus three on that flash there is gonna make the shadows on my side really, really deep, all right? So I turn on my flash, both flashes are firing, it's wireless, it's wonderful. I get a beautiful custom print. It's, it's like going in the dark room and dodging and burning and everything. And one other thing I will tell you, okay, the flash that my assistant was holding, that zoom was set at 70. You know, it was, it was like, it was a narrow beam. Look at her dress right here. It, there's light fall off over here. 
I didn't want the whole dress to be burnt out. On this monitor, you can't see it as, as well. On those, you can see it better. I don't know why. It's, oh, it's a different monitor. Okay. See, see, see how this part of her torso is brighter? Okay, and then the light falls off. Why? Because if you have a pure, pure white dress, you've just burnt out all the detail. It's got to be a slight gray to, to, to have detail. Looks like it's been vignette. Well, yeah, the, because the, the, the flash did not, yeah. you know, cover everything. Okay. This is one, fla one flash off camera, off camera flash. My wife was standing about 15 feet that way to, to the right. Um, and that's it. This was a, for, for a, uh, a, a brass ensemble in Tampa. And after I did this, they called me in and I photographed their entire symphony. So it was nice, you know. You know, if they like what you do and they like you, they will recommend you, okay? They also wanted something more formal. So what, what we did was we went, at, we went at nighttime in downtown Tampa and we got this. Now this is using three lights. And really, I had four lights. One got stolen, I went to Italy, <laughs> got stolen. So I'm down to three. But the fourth one really was just a backup. That's all it was. I, you know, I always worry, what if I'm using three lights and one fails? You know, they don't fail, they're fine, you know. Um, and I, I only use three lights very rarely. Most of the times, it's one to two lights that I use, right? But in this case, three lights. One is directly in back of the guy with the trombone in the center. As a matter of fact, this is basically a raw print. It has not been retouched. If you look in back of him, you can see the stand. Okay, so the thing is, I want to show you what I get out of camera. I don't want to show you after it's been photoshopped and manipulated and, and then you go home and you take the photograph and say, oh, it didn't come out anything like Manny had. Yeah, because if you retouch it and manipulate it, it's going to be different. I'm showing you what I get out of camera. And then any, anything else you want to do to it, all the better. Okay? So one flash is directly behind that guy there. That's giving everybody a halo. Look at the hair on the ladies. Mm -hmm. It's giving them a nice halo. Okay? Uh, the guy in the center, we could put a wig on him. But otherwise, you know, for the ladies. Okay? Um, my assistant is, is holding a flash off to the left over here, okay? And she's about, she's easily 15 or 20 feet away. And the reason for that is because, uh, okay, it's called the inverse square law, <laughs> which I'm not gonna get into, but, okay. So what happens is this. If you put the person very close, what's gonna happen is, let's say that from here to here, the exposure is uh, five six for the sake of argument five six. Well, what happens is by the time you get to him, it's easily at four. By the time you get to her, it's two point eight. These people are spread apart. So by putting the flash away from them, so now my distance from me to the subject is greater. It's not going to have that much an effect on on the other people. Okay, let me give you a perfect ex example. Okay, if you're standing in sunlight. Right? If you're standing in sunlight and uh, you take a picture of a person and that person is 50 feet away from you, the exposure is going to be the same as if you went next to him. Why? Because the sun is 92 million miles away. So the light source, it, there's no difference. Okay? But as soon as you bring that light source very close, light fall off becomes very rapid. It gets weaker very rapidly. Okay? So by putting her about 20 feet away, I knew that I could, I would have the same amount of light on him as on her. It starts to fall off where he is. I don't know if you can see. And what I did was, <laughs> he was very like pale, very, very light skin, you know, snow white skin. And so I put him farther away. He had a little bit darker skin and I put him closer. So you kind of play with that a little bit. Why? Because I'm lazy and I don't know Photoshop that well. Okay, so that's a bad combination. So I, I, I use Photoshop, I do basic things, but when it comes to like real manipulation, I have to give the image to, to, to a retouch artist. And I don't like that, because <laughs> they charge me money, <laughs> so. All right, now, the only thing you have to be careful of is when you start putting groups of people and your flash is off camera, 
is that somebody's going to cast a shadow. Remember how I'm showing you all this time. You see the shadow going diagonally across. The same thing is happening here. That woman is casting a shadow on the guy to her side and back. So what did I do? I just told him to come forward about six inches. And there you go. So you, got, you do have to be aware of that. When you have groups of people, you got to, in your mind, imagine like an arrow going straight across. Is that arrow going to hit the guy in, in the back? Then you have to move him. Uh, the question was, do I, was that on a tripod? I love tripods. No. <laughs> um, I'm using them less and less. I'm finding that it's faster. But, but I will tell you this, the difference between using tripod and non-using tripod, I notice that sometimes I get sloppy but by not using the tripod. Why? Because when you put your camera on a tripod, um, you're no longer thinking about holding the camera steady. You're, you're looking at the subject. You're looking at what you're doing. You're looking at the composition. You're looking at everything in the composition, in the background. Is there something sticking out of their head? I mean, you know, whatever the case might be. So I will tell you that when you use tripod, you tend to be more accurate. All right, so, but we were moving fast here, so. All right, so, the next time somebody says to you, I don't use flash, go ahead and tell them. Yeah, you need flash, okay? And for those of you that liked uh, the presentation, if you wanna, you know, and I realize there's people here of all different levels. That I'm sure there's some beginners, but I'm sure there's a lot of advanced people in here, okay? Uh, we do sell DVDs here through uh, BNH. Uh, everything from, from Jumpstart, which is a beginner's, Skilled, which is intermediate, and then Ultimate, if you really want to play around with lights and studio lights, um, and, so, and, and posing. Uh, and if you look at the reviews, we have really very good reviews on them. So again, thank you. We'll Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, b &H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.